Ever since its inception, this plane has attracted the attention of the entire aircraft industry, collecting countless praise and endless criticism. This aircraft is a classic medium-hull airliner, not distinguished by special design, innovation and outstanding performance, and the fuel that makes it a shining star is… potential. Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today we will try to understand what is in front of us. Another weird Chinese aircraft or the beginning of the history of one of the leaders in the world aircraft industry. I present to you the Comac C919. Unlike the frantic race and drama of the main actors of the Cold War, China's aviation industry was developing steadily. The Chinese bought and localized foreign equipment, mastered technologies and created something of their own. The military sphere of course was a priority. Timid copying over time has overgrown with modifications and now in the 21st century we see very impressive machines. What can I say? If I showed this photo 20 years ago and said that this is a serial Chinese 5th generation fighter, I would be called a loon. Of course, the civilian sector was also developing, but in the field of commercial aviation it was more difficult. Competences, scientific base and infrastructure is a gigantic system that requires incredible resources and decades of development. The most ambitious project of its time was the Shanghai Y-10 created in the 1970s. A hefty four-engine passenger airliner reminiscent of the layout of the Boeing 707. But things did not go beyond a few prototypes. The aircraft lagged behind of its counterparts technologically, its production and maintenance was difficult and funding was tight at the time. With such shortcomings it was uncompetitive even in the domestic market. And here we are at the beginning of the 21st century. The industry has grown incredibly and the established aviation corporations are actively interacting with industry leaders from all around the world. Besides, modern China is not the China of the 1980s. Now it is a gigantic economy with an immense aviation market. In such conditions, the emergence of a domestic civil aviation is simply inevitable. The aviators remembered the sad experience of the ambitious Y-10 and did not rush into projects to create the iPhone killer. They went with evolution, slow and boring yet relentless and assertive, something at which they are very good. The first steps were the regional turboprops Xi'an MA60, followed by its modifications MA600 and now MA700. More ambitious was the ARJ-21 Shenfeng. The Soaring Phoenix is a regional jet airliner with a capacity of up to 100 passengers and is made according to the scheme of a low-wing aircraft, with a pair of engines in the rear and a T-tail. Such conservatism of the layout can be explained by the manufacturer's caution, as well as the presence of an already mastered base. Back in the 1980s, China produced the McDonnell Douglas, MD-80 and MD-90 airliners that were similar in layout. Phoenix made its first flight in 2008 and entered the Chengdu Airlines fleet in 2015. The project was very complicated, but patience does its job. By the beginning of the 2020s, about 70 planes had been delivered. The ARJ-21 is a very real aircraft, which doesn't reach for the stars, but is good where it has to be. And so, having created the regional airliner in metal, the Chinese manufacturers faced the next step, a medium hull airliner. Medium hull is the largest niche in civil aviation, there are tens of thousands of them around the world, and a hefty piece of this niche flies in China itself. But it is also much more competitive and they'll have to fit here with such shocks as Boeing and Airbus. The question of what and how to create is a very non-trivial one. Yes, you can give engineers the task of making an aircraft similar to the A320 or Boeing 737, but it will be just a Chinese A320 or 737, and it is far from certain that it will be able to compete with them, especially with the latest MAX and NEO generations, not to mention that the life cycle support infrastructure is not yet mature. In such a situation, airlines do not need to take the risk of buying a strange aircraft. 
And this problem is extremely difficult to solve, even taking into account the active support of the Chinese government. You cannot conquer the market only with administrative pressure. You need to create an aircraft that airlines will want to buy. Comac was well aware of these factors and began to develop the concept of a future aircraft that would be able to overcome this barrier. This work conceptually follows the general trend of development of many industries in China – evolutionary development and gradual increase in competitiveness. There are many examples of this, from household appliances and electronics to cars and industrial systems. Starting with not bad for its money, and in the end, everything around you is Chinese. Here the situation is similar. Boeing and Airbus are already established brands. They have built giant industries and formed model lines that incorporate many advanced solutions. But this gigantism, model lines and advanced solutions require huge resources for their maintenance. As a result, no one is surprised that the cost of the MAX and NEO airliners easily exceeds $100 million. And this is very expensive, which makes the huge secondary market more interesting, where planes of course are worse and older, but cheaper. This became a potential loophole. The new Comac airliner has to be not bad for its money. The economy is not bad, comfort is not bad, environmental friendliness meets the requirements. Priority is to reduce the cost. The company deliberately does not focus on special innovations, so that you don't expect a special wow effect. You can save not only on innovations, but also on many other things. From cheap compared to Boeing and Airbus affordable labor, to the availability of components produced by the giant Chinese industry. Not to mention juicy nuances such as saving on R&D at the expense of industrial espionage, which among the giants of the airspace industry has become the talk of the town. It sounds kind of boring, but air travel is a business, and it's unlikely that airlines will worry much about the lack of a composite airframe and record low CO2 emissions, if the aircraft does its job and also saves a lot of money. Theoretically, the use of such a balance between low cost and acceptable performance, coupled with active support of the Chinese government, can ensure that the future airliner conquers the large niche of the domestic market, and then, after solving a number of issues, enters the world market, already for competition in the open sea, so to speak. The project was initiated in 2008, just as the ARJ-21 entered its flight test phase and then the world first heard the name Comac C919. Curious title. The letter C is for Comac or China. Also, sometimes this letter is presented as the third in the alphabet after A and B, hinting that Comac will become the third world leader after Airbus and Boeing. The 9 in the index can be thought of as the Chinese symbol of eternity, and 19 as an approximate capacity of about 190 passengers. Together, they form an index that varies from model to model. Just like Boeing has 737, 747, 757, Comac, along with 919, also has 929 on the horizon. The deadlines for implementation of the new airliner project were very tight. By 2014, it was planned to take the prototype into the air, with subsequent certification within a few years. It was assumed that by 2020, about 150 aircraft would be delivered, and the total volume, according to the business plan, contained the mark of 2300 aircraft. The total cost of the program was estimated at 58 billion yuan, approximately 9.5 billion dollars, which is not much. Although some estimates speak of much higher figures, up to 20 billion dollars, and this is a lot which is understandable, but already a little outside of the concept of savings. Various players from all over the world began to join the project very quickly, mainly contractors of systems and components, but there were also more curious partners. In 2011, Ryanair came along and signed a cooperation agreement with Comac. Another potentially interesting niche, Ryanair is a low-cost airline. Such airlines specialize in cheap transportation and minimize cost wherever possible, and the Chinese airliner, simple and cheap, can fit into such a business quite organically. Soon Bombardier joined in, with whom Comac has a fairly rich experience in cooperation. Now its expansion promised much benefit to both. 
The Canadians were supposed to help with the organization of maintenance, staff training and supply of components, and the Chinese would help with investments. Bombardier was spending heavily on the C-Series at that time. Ambitious, although of course not everything went according to their wishes. The C919 project at the moment is probably the largest in the history of China's aircraft industry. Just inside the country, several hundred suppliers and a couple of dozen research centers and universities from almost all provinces of the country are working on the aircraft. The production sites did not lag behind, and the chain turned out to be quite large. The nose section is made in Chengdu, most of the fuselage in Hongdu, the high-lift devices in Xi'an and Shanghai, and the tail in Xinyang. A lot of Chinese names. And not only Chinese. Despite the industrial potential, Comac is well aware that they cannot make a modern competitive airliner on their own in adequate time. So one should not be surprised to see in the description of systems names such as CFM International, General Electric, Saffron, Rockwell Collins, Parker, Thales, Honeywell, Liebherr, and so on. All these innumerable large and small rivers converge at the Comac plant in Shanghai, where the final assembly takes place. At the same time, there are plans to deploy the second assembly line in Hongdu. This whole machine began to stir already in 2011, when the appearance of the aircraft was formed and the assembly of prototypes began. The first of them, the airliner with tail number B001A, passed the rollout ceremony at the Comac plant in Shanghai in November 2015. Colorful event. The overall layout of the C919 is a classic modern jet airliner. A small swept wing, engines under the wing, classic tail, tricycle landing gear. More or less the same as that of modern class relatives, Boeing 737, Airbus A320 and MC21. Dimensions also do not stand out from the flock. Length 38.9 meters, height 11.95 meters, wingspan 35.8 meters. In terms of materials, the C919 is quite conservative and uses conventional metal alloys. Approximately 12% of the structure is made of composite materials, another 9 is aluminum lithium alloys. Curiously, Comac seems to have been working on a composite wing at the beginning, as is done on the MC21 and the A220. But things did not reach production. The wing is the most difficult part of the airframe, and apparently it was decided not to risk it preferring metals, and the composites went into the dynamic surfaces and winglets. Despite the fact that the wing did not become composite, a lot of work was done on it aerodynamically, giving it a little more sweep and the new supercritical airfoil. The high-lift devices are classic, and new materials made it possible to make them quite elegant. On each wing console in front, there are two sections of slats, on the trailing edge, two sections of single-slotted flaps, ailerons and spoilers, a complete set. All this beauty provides the aircraft with more or less standard flight performance. The cruising speed of the C919 is approximately Mach 0.78, 450 knots, 834 kilometers per hour, and its service ceiling reaches an altitude of 12,200 meters. Minimal speeds go from 117 knots empty to 144 knots with a maximum landing weight of 67.8 tons. Landing run is approximately 1600 meters. Takeoff run is approximately 2050 meters. The ER version will require another 100 meters. About it a little later. The aircraft landing gear is tricycle with two wheeled bogies on each leg. The drives are electric and hydraulic, more or less like the A320. The landing gear is made in China jointly with Liebherr. The Air X wheels are supplied by Michelin. The fuselage is oval in cross-section, its height is 4.17 meters and its width is 3.96 meters. The width is average at the level of the A320, larger than the 737 which is the most narrow in the class and smaller than the MC21 which is the widest in the class. Inside the fuselage, the width of the cabin is 3.73 meters, a good level. It is slightly bigger than the A320 and much bigger than the Boeing 737, but smaller than the MC21. 
Cabin capacity varies depending on the layout. 158 seats in a two class, 168 seats in a single class, and 174 in a dense one, like in the low cost airlines. According to this indicator, the C919 is on the level of the A320CO and 737 8, although the new generation airliners have gained a little capacity. The layout is also classic. In the front of the cabin behind the cockpit, there are a pair of doors on both sides, a galley and a lavatory, followed by a long cabin, equipped with two small emergency exits in the wing. The cabin allows the placement of four business class seats according to the 2 plus 2 scheme, and six economy seats according to the 3 plus 3 scheme, like with other planes. Behind it in the tail is another pair of standard doors, two lavatories and a large galley. The C919 cockpit is arranged in the style of the newest modern airliners. Five large multifunctional displays, a pair of auxiliary screens on the sides, plus indication on head-up displays. Glazing is also fashionable, a large area with graceful curves and without opening segments. If necessary, the cockpit can be left through the hatch from above. The C919 is equipped with a fly-by-wire control system. The flight is controlled by side sticks, there are no yokes. The aircraft avionics is modular, using the Ethernet network. Visually, the cockpit resembles the MC-21 and A220. The old A320 and Boeing 737 with all the upgrades are forced to adhere to the requirements of their families, so even in the Max and Neo generations they look more conservative. Exotics of course are also there. The color of the dashboards is kind of dark red-brown. Unusual, but curious. The C919 cargo compartment is located in the lower part of the fuselage under the passenger cabin and is divided into two parts. One is smaller in front of the center section, the second large behind the center section. The total volume is 45.2 cubic meters. The story about the design gives a general idea of what kind of aircraft is this C919. But I should mention that it is not alone. The project initially assumed the creation of a family, including as many as six versions. In addition to the base, there would be a shortened and extended version, cargo, VIP and special aircraft, mainly for government services. They didn't create all of them at once, for now there are two versions in work. The base C919, which is created with the STD, Standard Range Index, and the long haul C919ER, Extended Range. The ER is similar in design and differs mainly in the boosted engines, increased takeoff weight and therefore an increased amount of fuel that can be filled with a similar commercial load. Thanks to this, the aircraft flies farther. The maximum takeoff weight of the airliner is 75.1 tons in the basic version and 78.9 tons in the ER version. Meanwhile the dry weight of both is 45.7 tons. The empty airliners are heavier than their counterparts, while the maximum takeoff weight on the contrary is smaller. The structure is pretty heavy. Alas, this affected the distance. The base C919 flies at 2200 miles with a standard load. Not much, considering that the colleagues fly noticeably farther. The ER version flies at 3000 miles, on par with the old A320CO and Boeing 737MG, and that's with the latest LEAP engines. Actually, the C919 is criticized because of this, stating that it cannot compete with the MAX and NEO airliners. However, it is too early to cross the project off. In some materials you can see the description that our hero is a short to medium haul airliner. That is, the C919 is rather a very large regional airliner, and the C919ER is already a full-fledged medium haul. Why is this done? The aircraft is oriented, first of all, to the markets of China and developing countries. In China itself, air transportation often has huge traffic and short routes, a lot of seats and a short range, so wide-body airliners flying to neighboring regions are not surprising. And in the developing countries, the C919 will be jostling mainly with the older planes, while the newer European and American jets are clearly shifting towards bigger size and range. Market niches are getting a bit different. 
At the same time, it can be assumed that in the process of development, the problem of range to some degree can be solved. The basis of the C919 power plant is a pair of CFM LEAP engines. LEAP is the heir of the great and terrible CFM56 and is a fairly large family of engines which in different versions are installed on the Boeing 737 MAX, Airbus A320neo and Comax C919. On the Chinese airliner, the engine of the LEAP 1C version is installed. 196 cm composite fan, 3 low pressure stages, 10 high pressure stages, 11 to 1 bypass ratio. Everything here is at the highest level, nothing to pick on. Meanwhile, two versions of the engine are offered for the airliner. The base C919 will receive the 1C28 version with a takeoff thrust of 129 kN and the heavier C919ER respectively the boosted 1C30 with a thrust of 137 kN. The engine nacelle of the airliner is composite with good aerodynamics, noise absorption and sliding thrust reversal. It is made jointly with next cell. In general, it is noticeable how actively GE Aviation and Saffron participate in the project in various elements, and the main power plant in fact is entirely theirs, given that both CFM International and Nexcel are their joint ventures. Curiously, the engine nacelle is slightly flattened from below. A similar solution can be seen on the Boeing 737, but there it was done because of the low wing position, under which the large engine had to be, let's say, squeezed and stuffed. The C919 has a high wing, like the A320, and there seems to be enough space, but apparently it was decided to raise the engine higher. I won't give you an exact answer why. Perhaps the conditions of potential airfields are tighter than for the A320neo. Or maybe they just decided to play it safe. The C919 is powered by Honeywell's HGT750 auxiliary power unit. It is the continuation of the 131st series, the representatives of which are put on… well everything, from helicopters to wide bodies. Naturally, the Chinese aircraft manufacturers cannot simply give away the most critical element of their aircraft to foreigners. The idea of creating their own engine arose immediately after the start of work on the aircraft. The Shenyang Engine Design and Research Institute offered the WS-20, a new engine being created for the military transport Y-20. But Comac refused. The engine is rather military, it is created using not the most advanced technologies based on the CFM-56 and can hardly compete with the latest foreigners. The second option was more interesting. In 2011, the AECC CJ-1000A project was announced, which involved the creation of a family of engines for various Chinese aircraft, primarily for the C919. Meanwhile, the engines are created in wide international cooperation, mainly with European companies. The abbreviation CJ, as expected, has a lot of transcripts. C is often deciphered as China, commercial or civil, and J stands for jet. CJ can also be deciphered as Changzhang, pinyin for long river. This is how the Yanzi River is often called. It is planned to make two versions, with 125 kN for C919 and 131 kN for C919ER. Plus, based on the technologies and solutions of the CJ-1000, other engines should be created in the future. For example, the lower thrust CJ-500 for the ARJ-21 and the higher thrust CJ-2000 or AEF-3500 for the long-range CR-929. This strategy is very similar to the strategy of the Russian United Engine Corporation, with their PD-14 engines for the MC-21, PD-8 for the SSJ-100, and PD-35 for the same CR-929. The assembly of the CJ-1000AX prototype was completed in 2017, and 24 motors should be transferred for testing and certification. When will we see a serial engine under the wing of a serial airliner is hard to tell yet. The engine is a complicated thing, it will have to wait. 
The aircraft's main testing phase began in May of 2017, when the C919 prototype made its first flight from Shanghai Pudong Airport. After a beautiful flight, it had to take a break for several months. Not all parameters were confirmed by ground tests, but by the end of the year, the flights continued. The testing and certification plan was very ambitious. The prototypes were supposed to fly more than 4200 hours, which is a huge figure for the medium haul aircraft. But given that for Comac much of the work was being done for the first time, they apparently decided there can never be too many tests. Meanwhile, at the time of the first flight, the plan was already several years behind the original deadlines, which to be honest were too ambitious. The new deadline was 2020-2021. And in order to be on time, Comac had to transfer as many as six aircraft to the testers. The second prototype took off at the end of 2017. The third plane was in the air at the end of 2018. The fourth one flew in the summer of 2019. The fifth in the fall and the final sixth plane got down to business at the end of 2019. Despite the intensification of flights and a busy program, the amount of work was enormous and the aircraft often remained on the ground for long periods of time to receive modifications. In November of 2020, the Civil Aviation Administration of China issued to Comac an interim type inspection authorization, which made it possible to enter the final stages of testing. Comac wanted to complete the program quickly, but it was the year 2020 with its nuances which made adjustments, and the timeline began to slowly shift towards 2022. In May of 2022, the first pre-production C919 took to the skies. The plane flies throughout the country on usual routes, however, more in the format of a demonstration tour without ordinary passengers. The serial aircraft is also flying, undergoing factory tests for the full transfer to the airline and the start of standard passenger operations. What is curious and once again proves the priorities for the domestic market and the markets of developing countries, Comac apparently is in no particular hurry to certify the airliner with the FAA and EASA, which means that the US and European markets, where without these papers it's a no-go, are not interesting to them and this is logical. Let's be honest, getting into the homelands of Boeing and Airbus will be extremely difficult. Comac makes a big bet on its aircraft, and for all of China, the C919 is an object of pride, the largest civilian airliner that they have ever built in series. The plans are ambitious, the start of commercial operation is planned for 2023, and by 2025 Comac should deliver 50 aircraft annually and continue to increase the pace. At the same time, by the mid-2030s, Comac wants to occupy up to a third of the narrow-body aircraft market in China and almost 20% of the global market. To achieve such a goal, they will have to produce more than 100 aircraft a year. The task is very difficult. The head start in the initial stage should be given by the Chinese state-owned airlines and lessers, which act as launch customers. Frankly, at the moment, most of the contracts for the C919 fall on them. Although, in the orderly roles of red flags can be seen the American GECAS, a subsidiary of General Electric, the largest contractor of the project, possibly wanting to find new opportunities. One of the main questions regarding the prospects of the airliner is the question of the cost of the aircraft, both when purchased and in operation, and of course the efficiency of this operation. How well will they perform their direct tasks? The question of cost remains open. There are quite a lot of rumors and fog around it. According to the manufacturer's plans, the aircraft was supposed to cost about $50 million, which is indeed much cheaper than its counterparts. But in reality, according to various estimates, the price ranges from $70 to almost $100 million, and Comac will have to work on it. The question of how much and often the airliners will be able to fly depends on the speed of fixing the initial problems, those can never be avoided, and on the speed of development of the much needed technical support infrastructure, repair sites, spare part warehouses and so on. But given that in the early stages the C919 will fly in China, it can be optimistically assumed that on its territory, with active state support, the infrastructure will be built quite quickly. 
the stage of entering the world market will be much more difficult, especially in our time of endless trade wars. But then again, China has quite a lot of foreign economic partners from developing countries, to which the airliner is oriented in exports. It is hardly worth waiting for the C919 in the liveries of American Airlines, Qantas and Air France, but in many regions of the world, the airliner may well find many buyers. At the beginning of 2022, the portfolio of firm orders was about 169 units. They were being cautious with prospects for the future. If options and memoranda are added to this figure, then the order portfolio will exceed 900. Meanwhile, by the end of 2022, when mass production began, a significant part of the memoranda were reclassified into firm orders, of which there are now several hundreds. This volume should be enough to deploy mass operations and prove that the C919 is no longer some weird Chinese machine, but quite a decent aircraft. At least this is how it is planned. What happens in practice we can discuss in about 10 years. On this, I think, the history of the C919 can be put on pause. There will be a lot of news in the coming years. We will watch it and wish it good luck. Like and subscribe to the channel, lovers of everything flying. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights on different planes from different countries and soft landings to you.